Hornets and Pacers on this Wednesday night will lead into the Thanksgiving holiday here at Spectrum Center. Chris Kroger, Matt Carroll, it's time for the inactive report for the Pacers. No Victor Oladipo. He's got a sore right knee, a second straight missed game for the Charlotte Hornets. Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, Billy Hernan Gomez, both out with ankle sprains, both on the right ankle. This is a physical team. They get their hands on balls. Very good individual defenders, good schemes, physical scheme tonight. Boston did it with their length, their size, their schemes. These are these guys are more physical. So, you know, we're going to screen, hit people, good spacing tonight. If we can get them to, to play in the half court, have to score over our defense in the half court, we'll have a chance. Um, obviously, Bogdanovich shooting it well. We got to know where he's at, know where their shooters are at, uh, protect our paint. I think we did a pretty good job of that against Boston. Not perfect, but I think we've made progress in that area. We'll need that again here tonight. Closing out a game can fall on either end of the floor. It's not always offense. It's not always defense. Sometimes it's just whoever can make a, a play on either end of the floor. And right now we have not, you know, made those plays to close out a game. Bucks come into this one tonight as uh, the number two team in the East, the second best record in the NBA as well. And they've been the best offensive team in the NBA, one of the best defensive teams in the NBA, number one in net rating as well. What do you Hornets fans see a starting lineup for the Bucks. They've seen for all but one game this season. Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, Brooke Lopez, Malcolm Brogdon, Eric Bledsoe for the Hornets for the 20th time to open the year. The same starting five. Kemba Walker, Jeremy Lamb, Nicholas Batum, Marvin Williams, Cody Zeller, your five-man group. Uh, in Brooklyn, you want him inside where he's around the rim? Great oh, fine, Malik to Miles Bridges. Speaking of around the rim, don't hurt it, young fella. Hornets could just play it straight out, hope for a miss and get a rebound. Bledsoe's got it. Cody Zeller shifts out on him. Middleton's going to have to fire. Bledsoe. Mm. No, and the Hornets survive. Got back out. They've made a lot of plays down the fourth quarter. How good did this one feel tonight, closing out in a tough game like that? Uh, it's a great win. Great win. A great uh, team effort. Um, this group is very uh, resilient. That's the only word that comes in my mind is resiliency. And uh, we just keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. And it doesn't matter how we do it. But uh, there was a huge win for us uh, after uh, you know a poor performance uh, last night. I think sometimes you know, in the fourth quarter you get a little bit you know uh, antsy, and, and Kemba has to do so much that uh, when we together on the court, I can bring, like you say, uh, calm and then make sure we're in the right place and make sure I give him some rest too, because he does so much, and uh, we count on him to to play great every night. But sometimes we have to give him help, and so uh, those games when we play very good teams like Milwaukee, who's like top teams in the East, we. Need to find you know guys who can you know uh, step up in the fourth quarter to alternate and not just have Kemba uh, score 60 points because that's just not realistic you know. MKG 7.7 .7 rebounds he had a steal he had two blocks um, and he was a game high plus 18 but I think the thing that maybe the box score doesn't show is how infectious his energy is and his urgency and his competitiveness and I thought it just fell right up and down the roster Monday. We bounce back every time, you know, we're down in a game, we lose a game, we bounce back. And I think it speaks to our, our resiliency, our character, um, you know, what we're trying to build here. And uh, we got to build on that. We got to build more consistent habits, more consistent effort. And uh, that's what I expect.
same aggression, energy, drive that we did, you know, in the Milwaukee game, we'll give ourselves a great shot to win this game tonight. We'll be disruptive. We'll be the more physical team, the more aggressive team. So that's what I'm looking for tonight. You know, they, they do things, but, you know, there's nothing tricky out there that Atlanta runs or they don't have a tricky player out there. We just got to come to compete. Um, and this team has, you know, give them credit. They played well the last couple games. They played us well in the first game, uh, but our guys will be ready. your position while getting your team organized. Oh, D. Zeller! Oh my goodness! Took off from the free throw line. Season high 19, anything working particularly for you tonight or just kind of right place, right time? Yeah, a little bit of that. Um, you know, I just, I just tried to play with more energy in that second quarter. Uh, we came out a little flat and, uh, you know, it's kind of my role to pick up the energy. So uh, I tried to get it going in the second quarter and uh, it was a good win for us. We'll take any win we can get. So they started to run the offense a little bit through you um, with, with things are struggling there uh, tonight. Talk about that. Yeah, a little bit. It's, uh, you know, it's tough for, for teams to double team Kemba. Um, you know, if they touch it to me and I give it back or um, play with Kemba or if he's not open, play with one of the other guards. So, uh, you know, it's just another layer to our offense. Um, but it all kind of starts with uh, all the attention that, that uh, Kemba draws. How does it feel the fact you guys are winning games without lighting it up offensively or not? You know, you're doing your job on the defensive side. Feels great. You know, you're not going to shoot the ball well every night, um, but you can control your effort. And um, that's what we've been trying to do. Defense keeps us in every game. And, um, you know, we got to keep working at that. Is this the best sustained period that you've played in the NBA? I mean, you have like, what, it's like seven of the last eight, you've had 18 or more points. I don't know. Just trying to, like I said, keep working, um, do what it takes to get wins. Um, you know, just trying to work on both ends of the floor. Um, and, you know, if it feels good. I feel like we're playing good together. Um, you know, we're, we're starting to win some games, and um, it's, it's, it feels good. You were the starter from the first preseason game. He apparently had a conviction about you. What was that worth to you as far as going into the season with him, you know, expressing that kind of confidence in you? Um, it's huge, you know. Um, you always want your your coaches to believe in you, to trust you. Um, he didn't just give me the spot. Mm -hmm. He um, he told me I had to earn it, and um, that's what I'm trying to do. You know, it's, we only 21 games in. I gotta earn it every every day. You know, um, and you know that's what I'm trying to do. a Utah team that uh, has been struggling a bit offensively. They made a trade for Kyle Korver. We can talk about that, but they're more than capable and they've got the talent to do it. So when you, you scout this team, when you see them perform and they did it in stretches against Brooklyn the other night, what's clicking for them? Well, it starts, you know, they're a very good defense. Um, you know, an experienced team, a playoff proven team, well coached, uh, disciplined. They run their stuff. Uh, they know what they're looking for in each play. Um, so, you know, this is a very good group. They, they understand what they're trying to get accomplished. So we got to disrupt them. We got to be the, the aggressors. Can't let them just sit there and run their stuff, run their action. We got to be the physical team, the aggressive team. If we do that, we can disrupt them. But if you just let them run their stuff, you know, they run a lot of, uh, you know, movement. We, we got it. We're going to have a tough time guarding them. And then defensively, they're very good. You know, it really starts for them there. Go Bear like, is one of these teams where they filter everything to Go Bear and it, it helps their defense. So, uh, but it's nothing that we haven't seen. You know, we've seen Embiid out there and, and multiple types of players like this who protect the paint. So um, it's our job to, to move them around, especially in transition. Hornets fans, Hornets at 11 and 10. They're trying to get a third straight victory. That'd be a season high if they could notch it tonight. They haven't been two games over 500 in over a calendar year. Oh, that tastes so good. Can we get there tonight? Utah.
it to 10 and 12. They're two and six at home, eight and six on the road. Bit of an odd record for the Utah Jazz. Hornets a sterling eight and three mark here at the high. We'll see a lot of active hands tonight. Utah, very good defensive team. Not going to be easy offensively for the Hornets. Offensive rebound, and look at Miles Bridges, Rudy Gobert. Look, as soon as he realizes, uh oh, that's next zero coming at me. I'm not going to jump at that one. I'm just going to give the quarter. Kemba uses the screen. That's a three pointer. That falls, ring glass and in. That was an alley oop. It was red hot. And Engel steals it back. Hornets lost track of it. Rubio makes it hurt. Yeah, I feel like our guys, you know, this is my first time with this group. I feel like they have a better sense of the Eastern Conference, just the players, the personnel. Um, those guys we're just much more familiar with, you know. I'm more familiar with the West, so I'm trying not to overdo it with the West because, you know, I have experience there and we've seen them a number of years. But um, so it, it is a little bit of a different feel, but our guys got to go out and play no matter what. Well, you've seen Anthony Davis up close and personal being in the West in your division for the last few years when you were in San Antonio. There's no blueprint necessarily to stop him, but what do you do to try to slow down him? Well, you know, we, we saw a player, you, you could throw the kitchen sink at him and still he could score, you know, if, if, especially if he's making his jump shot, he, he's, a, he's a load. But, um, you know, we, we saw a player in like Giannis the other night, you know, a guy that could just... Uh, beat his own, play in transition, get to the rim, lobs, shoot threes, or, you know, at least shoot in the mid-range. And, you know, we just got to do it with multiple bodies. You know, we'll, we'll likely start Billy on him, you know, out there, and um, but provide him with support with our, our shifts and our crowds and, you know, our ability to go make plays on him and uh, just try to make his life as tough as possible. And if he's going to make shots, he's going to have to settle from the perimeter. We don't want him at the rim all night dunking it in, laying it in, getting to the free throw line, that generates easy points for them. If he's going to have to make shots, it's going to be from the perimeter. That's our, that's our job tonight. Pre-game thoughts from Hornets head coach James Borrego as we get ready for Hornets and Pelicans. Hornets at 11 and 11 overall, 8 and 4 here. Minsky. Oh, oh and Malik Monk steals it away. Monk off the back. And knowing that you've got a high no, flyer behind no, no, no. you, Good anticipation right there by Malik to peel away, come back for the steal, and just a quick look. 19 for young Frank. Dell, if we had a shot chart like that, oh my goodness. Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis just ripped the rim down and he got fouled. Yeah, oh man.